Hey guys, John here. Welcome to the first video on how to use Zebra HC. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at basic signal flow and also the top three windows that we have up here. So let's go to an init preset by right clicking the display and selecting init. And on the top left, we have synth. So this page is basically where we're going to be making our sound, adding modulations, kind of stuff like that. Next up, we have perform where we're going to be performing our sounds or the presets that we already have. And then we have our preset browser over here with the folders on the left and then the sounds in the center here. So for example, let's go to chug number three large and Let's go to the perform tab and see how that sounds. So a very cool cinematic sound. And what we're looking at here, we have four different windows and these are gonna be 2D. So what that means is that we can look at each one here and see what they all do. So let's kind of listen to it and see what it sounds like. So a very cool way to play the patches here. And another one that I really like too that comes with uh, Zebra is comb string. So this is a good example of how good comb filtering can sound like real string. So take a listen. So you have very cool sand and you also have these four as well that are already mapped and ready to go so feel free to play around with those it's a lot of fun so let's go to the synth tab and go to init preset and kind of talk about the basic signal flow here so what we're looking at here is we have one oscillator on the left hand side on the right hand side we have our amp envelope and the lfo that comes by default that's attached to vibrato so the main thing to realize in Zebra is that on the left-hand side, this is gonna be where our generators are gonna pop up once we start adding them. So oscillator number one is here. So if we add another oscillator number two, it's gonna pop up here as well. And then if we want a noise oscillator, something like that, or a filter, something over here, that's where these are gonna pop up. And on the right-hand side is envelopes, LFOs, kind of modulation, stuff like that. So let's say for example, we want to make a modulation for our tuning here. <laughs> and use an LFO as well. But for this one, we're gonna use LFO2 and we select this here and then LFO2 is gonna pop up here on the right hand side. So that's kind of the look and the order of how things are gonna be set up here. So if we go to back to an init preset, the center is very, very important. So what we're looking at here is we have four vertical columns here with all these different cells in between them. And these cells are where we're gonna be adding our different modules like our oscillators, filters, stuff like that, right? So basically kind of ignore these three for now. If we go down this first line over here, this is kind of what we're gonna be concerned with right now. So our oscillator goes down and it gets processed through this vertical line. So we play a note, we can hear our oscillator. So the next thing we might wanna add would be a filter. So let's click the next cell below oscillator number one and let's select VCF number one, give this some resonance and kind of bring back the cutoff here. So we can tell that the oscillator is getting fed into the filter as it looks right here from top to the bottom. Now going down here, we also have a mute, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna mute this lane only. Below that, we have something called main. So this is basically where we're going to be sending this lane. And sending it where, you may ask, is down here at the bottom. And we have three vertical lanes here as opposed to four. So let's say we want to add a reverb to our sound here. In the first column here, let's select this, this empty cell and let's go to rev number one, which is reverb one. We can hear our reverb working and that's because it's getting sent to main. So if we select main and we went to bus one, we wouldn't even hear anything and that's because this knob is down so we turn this up here we hear our signal but there's no reverb we'd have to move this reverb to the second one here or really any column here vertically it's gonna be the same depending on the order of processing that you would like so if we move this over to three now it's dry again we'd have to go to bus number one and then select bus number two and turn this knob up here and now we would hear our reverb again. So let's move this back to main. It's dry and let's go back to main again up here. And we can hear it. So let's right click and remove this. And while we're removing stuff, we can always double click these cells to temporarily deactivate them or double click them to bring them back. And on Windows, you can hold Alt and click and it'll bring them back as well. I believe Mac might be control or something like that. 
but yeah, that's how you temporarily uh, disable them. If you want to remove them entirely, you can right click and then remove. So moving on from this main here, below that we have a pan knob here, so we can pan these lanes individually. And below that we have a pan modulation source. So let's say we want to modulate the panning left and right with an LFO. We'd select this none here, and since we already have LFO one there, we can select LFO one. And now this LFO is tied to this pan and we give it some depth here. And it's gonna bounce that left and right and left and right. And let's go to remove that. We're gonna get into much more depth with all these different lists here because this is kind of overwhelming at first. So below that we have envelope number one. So this is telling us the amplitude envelope. So which is gonna be this guy right over here. So kind of a basic envelope. Let's give it some release here. Okay, so right now this lane is saying we are using our amplitude envelope from envelope number one. So we can select this here and we can go one, two, three, or four or select gate. So one, two, three, and four are just different versions of an envelope. We can always select envelope number two if you want to have a different envelope for this lane only and have the second lane maybe be a different envelope or something like that. As you see here, envelope number two doesn't really have a release as long as the first one. So it's gonna cut off much quicker and we can go back to envelope number one. And something very cool that I do want to point out, if we go back to envelope number two, and let's say we have a super, super long release, something kind of ridiculous like this. I'm like, okay, that's cool, but I, I don't really feel like using this. I want to go back to envelope number one. You go to envelope number one, and now envelope number two goes away, right? So it's gone. We're not using it anymore, but we're like, oh, man, we spent time setting that up. If we go back to envelope number two, we still have those settings applied where we were working on it, but it's just technically not in the patch because we're not routing it anymore. So that's kind of cool that it keeps the setting and it doesn't reset them every time you open up the envelope there. Last up here, we have gate. So basically an on off. If we don't really want an envelope to drive that. So let's go back to envelope number one here. So below that we have volume. So what's cool about these individual lanes is we have individual volume control. And as well on the panning, we have modulation. So if we wanna have volume mod modulation on this lane only, we can again select LFO number one, give it some depth and it'll sound like this. Now, basically everything that we went over here for this first lane here is going to apply to the next three lanes. So it's all the same. It's just kind of, we have four lanes of like that to work with. So if we went back to an init preset, we can have oscillator number one going to lane one, oscillator number two going to lane two, oscillator number three going to three, and oscillator number four going to four. So we can have these four oscillators here and they're all going down their independent lanes. And we can mute them individually, which is really cool. Pan them individually do the volume individually, have their own specific amplitude envelope individually, which is really cool. So there's a lot of flexibility with this type of routing here. So if we went back to an init preset, we can have oscillator number one going to filter number one, oscillator number two going to filter number two, and those are gonna be on separate lanes and we can mix the volume here, change the panning and sort of stuff like that, which is really nice. So yeah, that's kind of just a basic overview of how the signal flow works in Zebra. We're gonna be getting much more in depth as we ha always do. So I thought kind of just showing you how the synth works, how you can route stuff and things like that to kind of get your brain moving kind of get you started and feeling a little bit more comfortable in the synthesizer because it's a really cool one to have and it sounds fantastic so thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video